So here's the quasi live um, stream for today because YouTube is being unusable for me. I mean, the YouTube live. So I just feel like discussing the Bhagavatam and not messing around with YouTube all day long. <clears throat> so let's do that right now after I get this camera pointed more correctly, or shall we say less incorrectly. All right. So today we're doing... Oh, it definitely doesn't feel the same without everybody's energy listening. Okay. Narada uvacha iktam pranjanam nari yachamanam adiravat abhyanandatatam viram hasanti viramohita. And this means... So as you remember, uh, as I hope you remember, the King Puranjan met a girl outside of the city. You have to just, just go back to the previous live streams on this if you don't know what we're talking about. And he said, hey, why don't we be friends? Special friends. And now it starts here. It says, Itam Puranjanam Nari, right? When she heard Puranjana Yachamana Madhiravat give his pleas, his begging in a very, uh, what do we say, confused Adhira way, like an empathetic way, that evoked her Abhyanandata, which is her sympathy, her, her empathy. And, and then she became Mohita, charmed by him. The, and then Hasanti began to smile and speak. So hearing the key, the hearing the king's confused pleas evoked the woman's sympathy. Enchanted by that hero, she smiled and addressed him. So there's an important point here. The king is described as Adiravat and Yachamanam which means that he's confused. Oh, oh, that's the wrong one. But anyway, it means he's confused, right? So it's his fascination with the outer face of the intellect, which is confusing him. Now, why does she feel sympathy for him? The, this, the woman who is the intellect feels sympathy for Paranjana, who is the soul. Why does she feel sympathy for the soul? Because the soul is consciousness. That's what the, a soul is, is consciousness. Consciousness is the foundation for knowledge. Like a frame is a place for a picture to go. A soul is a, pl is a place where knowledge goes. It's a place where experience goes. Because it's consciousness. And so it's like if you had an art gallery with just frames and no pictures in it, it would be like a shame. So similarly, when, this, when the intelligence looks at the soul, in this story, it feels sympathy, sympathetic. You need me. You need to fill in your potential. You're confused. You shouldn't be confused. The intellect manifests it to fulfill the soul's potential to be full of knowledge. Just as the soul needs the intellect, the intellect needs the soul. So you see, they get attracted to each other. The intellect can help the soul explore, exp, do two things. The intellect can help the soul explore the world, and the intellect can also help the soul understand itself. She is attracted to him. This shows that the intellect wants to understand the soul. And he is attracted to her. This shows that the soul wants to do see what the intellect can do which it can also expose the world so there's a two-way street here and it's very interesting that they're attracted to each other and that means a lot so now she's going to speak she's going to speak about what he asked her a bunch of questions like who are you where'd you come from who are all these people with you what's this big snake that's around you so she's going to answer now and she says navidama vayam samyak kartaram purusharshava 
आत्मनश्च परस्यापी कुत्रम नाम च यत्कृतम Oh my God, I still have the live stream. Oh no. <clears throat> so she says, O bull of men, Purusha, Rishabha. Bull of men, it kind of means bull of men or greatest man. But it, and it's a, a sexy kind of a dress. She's calling him a, a manly man. <clears throat> so she's indicating already that she likes him. She says, we don't really know. Not vidam avayam. We don't really know the answers to the th questions that you asked. You asked me who I am. You asked me who these people are, where I came from. And she says, samyak vidam. <clears throat> we don't totally know. Samyak means totally. We don't totally know who we are, where we came from, what is our lineage, who made that lineage uh, we don't know my friends don't know either so that's very interesting she's the intelligence but she says we don't know but she says we don't fully know samyak and that's the most important thing in the statement what the intellect does is it figures things out but it never fully knows anything it just has probability of knowledge that seems to be, that's, this seems to be a drum because I hit it, it makes a sound and it has all the other characters of the drum. It's probably a drum, 99.99999% accurate, but I don't know for sure. Maybe it's something else. Similarly, even that's even with easy stuff, but with complex stuff, like what is that black hole or what's an electron? Or what to speak of what is consciousness where does it come from what's god what's soul then the intellect can guess and it can make really good guesses educated guesses hypotheses that can be based on experiment etc but it can't samyak vidam it can't perfectly know so intelligence actually doesn't even know where it comes from but she's gonna but she knows something, but not everything. So in the next statement that she makes, she's going to tell him what she does know. We know only that we exist here. And now, Ihadya Santamatmanam Vidama. That's what we know. We know that we're real. We know that for sure. We know we're real. We know we exist because we know that we're right here, right now. But not Tataparam. Beyond that, anything, we don't know. So we don't know what came before this, and we don't know what came after this. We just know that right now, we're here. We we know only that we exist here and now. We don't know the future, what will become of us after this. Nor do we know the past, which created the city that we're living in. Here we are right now, standing outside this city. So we don't know where this city came from, what created it. We don't know what created us. We don't know what's going to happen to the city later. We don't know what's going to happen to the city well, to us later. But one thing we do know is here we are. Then she says, she continues, Ete Sankyas, Ete Sakaya Sakome. Na Nara Nara Yascha Madana. I'm sorry. Nara Nara Yascha Madana. Mandana. Manada. Oh, Manada. She's addressing him. Ete Sakaya Sakyo me Nara Nara Yascha Manada. Suptayam Mai Jagarti Nagoyam Palian Purim. So she was very interesting. So she addresses him as Manada, which means a very res he's very respectful. He is very respectful to her, and she likes that. So she addresses him as Manada, a person who gives respect. 
just to show him I like that. So she says, respectful one. Here we have these Nara and Narya, these men and women that are with me, right? You asked about them. Well, they're my Sakka and Sakka. They're my friends, girls and boys. Some people say that in Indian culture, you can't be friends with the opposite sex, but that's obviously not true. Otherwise, well, Narada would have made a deal out of it. In this, in Indian culture, fine, but in Vedic culture, it's obviously not true. Well, there was Narada who said, wow, this is strange. She had friends of the opposite sex. So she has these 10, 10 she has 11 male friends, and she has, each male friend has hundreds of female friends that are her friends as well. And they will serve her. So she says, these boys, these these men, these women, they're my friends. And then she says, you asked also about the snake. That's what I know about these guys. I don't know where they came from. I don't know who they are. But I know that they're my friends. And then you also asked about this snake that's encircling me on all sides. Here's what I know about the snake. When I sleep, the snake is awake. He stays awake. When I sleep, the snake stays awake. Nago yam palian purim. This naga, he stays awake when I go to sleep to protect the city. Palian purim. So the men and women with me are my friends, and the snake stays awake to protect the city while I sleep. This is super interesting. <clears throat> and I'll, I've tried here in my footnote to explain this with modern terms and references. So. With modern terms, you have this concept, the brain, the physical brain. The physical brain is the <clears throat> or organ that the intellect uses to actually affect the physical body. So in the physical brain, it has these sections to it. There's like a middle section, a, a core section, and an upper section. So the cerebellum and then the medulla is the core section. You can think of the snake and the woman as... You can separate their functions as the way that the modern brain biologists separate the functions of the medulla and the cerebellum. The girl is the intellect, which is the functions of the cerebellum. The snake is prana. But what does prana actually do? It does the things that we attribute to the medulla of the brain. So what is that? Outer section is where you have complex thought, words, all those kind of processing things, complex things. The inner section is where you get the body functions regulated. This, in the story, the girl says that uh, I, I'm always with this snake. So you just like you can't really separate in a human, you can't really separate the prana and the brain. I think in any creature, you're not just going to have a medulla. So similarly, you can't separate function the intelligence and the prana. It's, the prana is actually just a simpler form of the intellect. The two are inseparable. Now, when we sleep dreamlessly, then the intellect, which is the sophisticated thoughts in the cerebellum, which is the girl, she sleeps. But the medulla never sleeps. If you if your medulla sleeps, you're dead. Your body, your heart will start beating. Your you'll stop breathing the blood will stop pumping your organs will stop functioning so that's what she's saying this snake that's with me when I sleep it stays awake to protect the city the city's the body right the medulla or the prana never sleeps it continues to keep the body alive by regulating the breathing digestion circulation etc and you remember that's why the snake has five heads because there's the different types of prana one which does controls the breathing, another which controls the digestion, another which controls the intestinal functions and the evacuation, another which is in the blood flow, and another which is in the nervous system. All right, so that's very interesting. So she explained, I don't really know who I am, but all I know is these people, uh, here I am. And here are my friends. I don't know who they are, but I know they're my friends. They help me do things. So that's the senses and all their functions. And who's the snake? Well, when we were all asleep, the snake is still awake and make sure that the city is safe. That's the prana or the basic functions of the of the intellect, which is to regulate the heart flow, etc. Now she says...
Now she says, Dishtyagato si badramte gramyam kaman abhipsase udvahishyami tangs te yam so bandhu beer arindama. So she had, now she calls him Ari Dhamma, which means a person who tames the enemy. So now she's telling him she thinks he's strong. Enemy tamer, by luck, you've also wound up here. This Tiagato, you came here by luck. You came here by your fate, by your destiny, by your karma. You reincarnated through the different cities, and now here you are at this city. This Tiagatosim. And that's good. You got lucky. Badramte. That was your good fortune. Oh, enemy tamer, by luck you have wound, also wound up here where I am. And that's a great fortune for you. And I know what you want to do. Gramim Kabmam of Pipsate. It's obvious that you want to enjoy Kama. You want to enjoy this Grama, this city, this town, this world. You want to enjoy the city. Well, guess what? Udva hishyami tangs team. I'm going to help you. I'm going to enable you to enjoy. And see, all my friends, Swabandubi, with all these friends, we're going to help you enjoy the city. And then, she says, Imam Tom. Aditishtasiva Purim Navamukim Vipo Mayo Panitan Grinata Grinaha Kama Bhogan Shatam Sama You can stay in this city. This is our city. You think it's your city, but it's our city. Uh, it's my snake, my snake, my friends, myself, we made this city. We made it for you. You can stay here. But it's ours. Uh, that's another important point. The soul tends to think that the body is... It owns the body, but actually Prakriti owns the body. The, the, the elements of nature which created the body own the body. The soul rents the body or uses it. So she says, you can stay here. And you can be the Vibhu. You can be the, you can be the king. You can be the king of the city. You can be the master of the city. This is the city with Navamukhi, with ha which has nine faces or nine gates. I'm going to give it to you. Maya Upanitan Granaha, I'm going to give it to you. And you can come, Boga, you can enjoy the heck out of this place. For Shatam Sama. You can enjoy, you can stay here for 100 years. That's nice. Then she says, why a hundred years? That's the typical lifespan. And in fact, every city has a lifespan of a hundred years. The citizens are allowed to live in that city for a hundred years, but the time passes differently in each city. So when each, each inhabitant of the city dwells in it for the maximum of a hundred years, sometimes they have, they get evicted sooner, but but on the objective time scale, that hundred years can be stretched. Or so, in other words, if you're born as a, as a tree and you live for five hundred years, you still feel like you live for a hundred years, but your time is passing much slower. If you're born as an insect and you live for seven days, it still feels like you live for a hundred years because your time is passing much faster. You're experiencing time much faster. Okay, so then she says she just she just told him you can live in this city. So he might think, is anybody else going to come move here in here? Because that might be a little bit awkward. So she says, now everybody here is going to make you as the king. Kam nu twad anyam ramaye hyarti gam akovidam. This is my favorite verse in this section. Asam praya bhimukam ashvatana vidam pashum. So here she says, nobody else will be allowed to enjoy the city. 
nobody else would be allowed to enjoy her because she's the queen of the city all the functions of the city are accessed through her so she uses the word Ramaya which means sex which means pleasure so she says we're not going to have sex with anybody else just you Nakam nu tad anyam nobody but you Ramaya will be able to enjoy me why not or actually and now what she explains is no one but you will enjoy my full-fledged pleasures so now she's going to explain this is a human city this is a human life that you're about to inhabit my intellect is similarly developed so what you're going to enjoy here in this city is going to be special and she contrasts it with, I think it's four other types of pleasure which are enjoyed in other cities. So she says, No one but you will enjoy my full-fledged pleasures which are neither dispassionate, unskilled, short-lived, or habitual. So the human form is the fifth, which is full-fledged and covid very fully developed enjoyment especially of sex so she says there's problems with other ones other cities other cities that you inhabit can be aratigya they have consciousness but they don't have rati they they have experience but it has no passion to it and that is not particularly enjoyable to have the, an experience with no passion and who, what is she talking about there? She's talking about taking birth in the plant kingdom, as a tree, as a as a bush, whatever, as grass. You have experience, but you don't. According to her, the intelligence doesn't comprehend any form of passion. So it's called aratigya. So yeah, how can you enjoy any kind of sexual experience when you have no passion? Then she says unskilled a COVID them some of the cities they do have passion but they don't have skill those are a COVID they're not COVID <laughs> COVID COVID means ex expert actually so this this is actually for humans the Human beings have passion, but they don't have expertise. They don't know how to have sex. They just go about it, most of them. And then she says there's also another type of birth, which is Ashvatana. Which is scheduled. It might not be a COVID. They might have expertise, maybe Actually, the way it should progress is like this. There's the plant kingdom. And in the plant kingdom, it's aratigya. There's no passion in any experience. In the animal kingdom, there's passion, but it, the passion comes on a schedule. So the animals have their seasons where they go into heat and etc. And then they enjoy sex. And otherwise, they're not up for it. So animals have passion, but it only comes on a schedule. There's no spontaneity to it. There's no surprise to it. Then there's humans that get passion anytime, all the time. But they don't have COVID. They don't have expertise. They're not learned about it. They're not excellent about it. They're, they're brute about it. Just, that's not going to be what you experience here with me. What she says is, what if you don't have COVID, uh, sorry, that it sounds like COVID-19, if you don't have expertise to enjoy sensual life, then you will have a samarpaya. There will be no long-term beneficial result from it. So if you um, just go about sexual and sensual pleasure in an animalistic, hedonistic way, you just get immediate gratification, but no long-term happiness. But she says the human form of the human form of intellect can figure out 
how to engage in sensual life and pleasures with long-term benefit with long-term pleasure and that's what she's proposing that she's going to give him very interesting and then she makes she follows this up to explain dharma hyatarta dharma hyatrarta kamao cha so therefore in the pleasure that you'll experience in the city, you have the potential to fulfill these three goals. Dharma, Arta, Kama. Dharma, Yatra, Arta, Kama, Cha. And you, you will experience those through Prajanandam, Vritam, Yasha. And then she says, Loka, Vishoka, Viraja will be the results. Yana, Kevali, Novidu. So what she says is, in these pleasures, you will certainly experience the pleasures that I'm going to show you. The human way to truly enjoy life will allow you to experience Dharma, Dharma, Arta, and Kama. Kama is pleasure, Arta is wealth, and Dharma is integrity. So you'll experience pleasure, wealth, which is the fortifier of pleasure, and integrity, which is the real soul of the pleasure allows it to be long term you will experience those through prajananda which is sex so you will experience pleasure through sexuality and then you will experience arta through amrita which is food humans will cook will cook for you we're going to we have cuisine and fame yasha your so your integrity you'll experience it with fame. Integrity gives fame. Arta or wealth gives you food. And then kama or pleasure gives you sex. And then the results are loka, vishoka, and viraja. The result of sex or sensual pleasure is vishoka. You don't cry. You don't feel sad. You don't feel bored. The result of food, which is arta, is viraja you won't be sick you'll be very healthy and the result of integrity which generates reputation is loka you ascend to higher realms so she says in these pleasure and then she says yana kevali no vidu you would never be able to get these alone without me you will never get these in these pleasures you will certainly experience pleasure wealth and integrity through sexuality food and fame granting happiness health and the higher realms such as you could never imagine without me now she says pitri devarshi martyanam bhutanam atmanas chaha kshemyam vadanti sharanam bhaves minyad grihashrama She says, Vedanti, they say. Vedanti means they say. So some experts, some knowledgeable, the Vedas or somebody says. They say that... What is that? Where is it? Actually say. Oh, Grihashrama. Grihashrama means to work to build a house. To get married is Grihashrama. So they say that marriage is actually the sharana the really safe place kshema it's really safe sharana it's a safe shelter a house is a safe shelter isn't it so similarly the kind of life which creates a home and a family is a very safe shelter kshema yam vadanti sharanam bhavesmen in this world yad grihashrama the married married life creates a house that makes this world very safe and secure that's what they say and it benefits a lot of people it benefits definitely me Admana, but it gener it benefits everybody because when you have a house then you have resources you can take care of other people 
So it benefits your your animals that you have, the Bhutanam, the animals that are around your home. It benefits Martyanam, all the, the society that forms around the homes, the human society. It also benefits the Rishis, the sages, the people who study, they do not have time to make a house. They do not have time to cook food. All the people who have extra food, they just bring it to them. It benefits the devas because the ceremonies are performed for the gods. And it benefits the pitri, the families and the ancestors. Then she says... Kanama Virvakyatam Vadanyam Priyadarshanam. Now she calls him Priyadarshana. I had once upon a time had a friend whose name was Priyadarshana. Navrinita Priyam Praptam Madrishi Tvadrisham Patim. So she says, What woman in the world would not want to marry you? She just said, We'll be great together. And then she said, marriage is a great thing. So she, now she says, and here you are. You asked me to marry you. What woman in the world would say no? Kanam I'm sorry. Why would I not accept a hero? Why not? Why would I not accept a hero like you? You're Vikyata. You're famous. You're Vadanya, you're very kind or generous. You're Priyadarshana, you're very good looking. And you're Priyam Praptam. <laughs> you're easy to get, you're right here offering yourself to me. So, what reason do I have not to say no? So, Madrashi, Tvadrashi, Patim, we should marry. You and I should, mar should marry. I should take you as my husband, she says. Then the next one, she says, is what woman wouldn't. Kasya manas te bhuvi bhogi bhoga yo Shtriya na sajjit bhuja yor maha bhuja Yo nata vargadhim alam grhundata Grhnodata Smitava lokina charatya pohitam what woman in this whole world would not be drawn to your mighty serpentine arms, your chivalrous affection, and your lo loving... Ah, uh, let me punctuate this differently. What woman in the whole world would not be drawn to your mighty serpentine arms, your chivalrous affection and lotus eyes, and loving eyes, destroy the worries of single ladies? Anatta Varga, the single ladies they they have adhi, they have anxiety but that anxiety gets apohita or destroyed or removed by grinodata you see if you're a single woman you're worried I mean not everybody some are comfortable but in general in the world typically you feel vulnerable because men are aggressive so when you find a man who looks at you with kindness, not aggression, which is so retarded how some of these people have translated this, these things, but um, when you find a man who's got grinodata or compassion, chivalrous compassion, that's what this word means, grinodata, means it's chivalry. A man who's going to use his strength for something compassionate rather than something dangerous. And smitavaloka, when you can see that generous, chivalrous compassion through the smitta of a loka, the kind eyes, the smiling eyes, the, lo the loving eyes, then the woman feels her apohitam of adhi, her, her worries get taken away. Finally, here's a guy who's not evil. This guy will protect me from the rest of the evil world. So she's, she's saying, what, so what woman wouldn't be attracted to those arms that can protect, that are big like serpents? So actually, she's worried, as the intellect, she's worried, what soul will use me? 
maybe we can read it this way. But here's a soul who's kind. I like it. And then the final statement that we have translated this week. No, no, no. Why? This is not even working. Here we go. The final statement, Narada Uvacha, Iti Tau Dampati Tatra, Samudya Samayam Mitha, Tam Pravishya Purim Rajan, Mumudate Shatam Sama. So then Narada says, after she said this, the two of them were eager to unite, eager to unite. They, they were eager to unite. The soul is eager to accept the intellect. The, the intellect is eager to accept the soul. The soul needs the intellect. The intellect needs the soul. So since they're eager to unite, then right there, Tatra, they dampati mita. They accepted each other as husband and wife then and there. Then, after that, they tam pravishapurim rajan. They went into the city. So they united there in the forest and they went into the city. Mumudate. There they had a good time. Mumu. They enjoyed in the city for shatam sama for a hundred years so of course this is not the end of the tale this is just the beginning now the king now the soul has incarnated in the human form and united with its intellect now he just summarizes and says they're going to enjoy life in the city for a hundred years but the story is going to go on he's going to tell what they do in the city so for that we will reconvene next week and hopefully Facebook will let us do things live. Thank you.